Hello, I'm Andy and welcome to Element 14 Presents. A couple of years ago, the Element 14 community picked the question of scale for their Project 14 challenge. I picked up that challenge and, and built a jumbo sized red LED from some 3D printed parts and a dome I picked up from a homeware store. The community rewarded me with first prize of a shopping cart from my local Element 14 site. Recently I've been working with RGB LEDs and I thought see what happened if I scaled those up in size. So first I made a 10x version and it wasn't really that impressive to be honest. So I doubled that up to 20 times and although it's kind of getting there it still doesn't really fit the description of Jumbo. So I thought why not cut the whole hub and make it a hundred times bigger than the original size. Let's see some of the challenges that I had while making such a jumbo sized RGB LED. Our solution revolves around the WS2811 chip. This is the control chip that takes a signal in for the microcontroller and can control R3 RGB LEDs. Now, we want to replace those LEDs with much higher power versions, and this little chip is not capable of driving those. So, what we need is some kind of uh, amplification or driver stage. So, what I've been looking at is to use an optocoupler, which will look to the WS2811 chip as a LED, and that can in turn drive a MOSFET transistor, power transistor, um, which will control the LEDs. WS2811 LED controller chip, optical isolators, power MOSFETs, some high powered LEDs, a number of heat sinks and some heat sink mounting kits. My first design for the MOSFET driver was to use the transistor part of the optocoupler to pull up the gate of the MOSFET with a simple resistor to pull that back down. What I saw though when I measured the signal though was although it turned on quite sharply, the turn off signal was a shallow curve, meaning that it was spending quite a lot of time in transition, which is going to mean that the MOSFET is going to heat up. Did a bit of research, found a alternative form of optocoupler with a built in push pull driver that has two transistors, one that pulls the gate high and a second that pulls the gate low. And as you can see, that gives us a much squarer signal, although there appears to be a bit of noise there on the rising part of the signal. If we zoom in on that, we can see that what's happening is it's overshooting, and then there's a bit of ringing going on on the signal there. And we can reduce that problem by increasing the gate resistance on the driver circuit. As we move up to bigger devices, we have to concern ourselves with the heat dissipated due to power uh, being burnt in the devices. So first looking at our MOSFET, um, I'm going to see if we can get away without using a heat sink. So I'm going to use the thermal resistance of the junction to case and then the case to ambient. Um, and we add those two together and multiply by the power to get the temperature increase. Now, the power we can calculate by looking at the current flowing through the device and using a derivative of Ohm's law, so I squared R to give us power. The R is the ohm resistance, which is very small for the MOSFET. So we are going to be using about 4 milliwatts of power. And then we times that by the, temp uh, the thermal resistance and that gives us a, an overall temperature increase of maybe 2, 2.5 degrees uh, Celsius, which is fine for a MOSFET, it's not going to uh, stress the component in any way. LED on the other hand is going to be burning a lot more power, so I use the slightly more complicated um, circuit using a heatsink. So here we've got the junction temperature, we've got the thermal power resistance, which is normally about um, one degree per watt, um, and then we've got the heatsink uh, thermal resistance. Um, so we have them all together, and again multiply by the power, now, for LEDs, it's not always easy to find out the exact power you're using uh, in these devices. So I'm going to make a sort of rule of thumb estimate that uh, about half the energy put into the LED is going to get converted into light. It's 
it's around 50% efficient. Um, so for 10 watt LED, um, that's five watts burnt. And if we then uh, multiply that by the, the sum of the thermal resistance, uh, we can pick a suitably sized heat sink to ensure that the temperature rise of the LED is not too large. Did a quick experiment using the infrared thermometer. As you can see, after the LED has been on for a period of time, the temperature has risen significantly from the background temperature, hence proving out our uh, theory that we will need a heat sink for the LEDs. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community, where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! So here's the circuit I've ended up with. Uh, the driver circuit's pretty much what we used for the testing earlier. A couple of changes on the red channel. I've got a power diode to drop a extra volt or so, um, as red LEDs typically have a lower forward voltage than green and blue. I've also added a high wattage resistor in there to uh, limit the maximum current that flows through these uh, these LEDs. So when I came up to lay out the design of the circuit, there's a couple of things I needed to do. Uh, firstly, to choose a suitably large footprint for the the resistors. Um, also needed to find uh, a footprint for the uh, screw terminals. So I found one that uh, had the same pin spacing and pin size. And then finally, I needed to find a, a suitable footprint for the power MOSFETs and luckily there was a buzz 11 where the pinouts 1, 2 and 3 map to the gate drain and source uh, in the same way as my uh, Infineon MOSFETs do. Once I have my footprints in place I could move on to the layout of the board. I split the board into two halves with the optocouplers down the middle so on the left hand side I've got all the signal side of things and on the right hand side the power. The connectors need to go on the edges of the board so that the cables could be easily screwed into them and I've put three mounting points on it um, and tried to leave a bit of space around those. Um, three because I was worried that I might be screwing this to an uneven surface um, and if you have four then you run the risk of twisting the board. The power side of the circuit I set all the nets to have the a slightly wider track. There are detailed calculations for this um, so you can ensure that um, you don't overload your traces uh, but I took a sort of rule of thumb and set them to one millimeter which should should be plenty in, in this case. The model that we're going to build for the LED is approximately 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters so it's a lot bigger than I can fit on my 3D printer bed. So I'm going to use a different technique to assemble it. I'm going to use something called laminated object manufacturing. Um, in other words, taking sheets, um, cutting out patterns of them and doing them together. Um, it's typically done in manufacturing using very thin sheets of paper so we can get uh, very fine detail. But I'm going to be using this uh, six millimeter MDF and I'm going to have about nine sheets of that all put together and will give us a reasonable amount of detail on our model. So here's our LED strand. On the far left, we've got a controller, which is a simple Arduino Uno, running a uh, sketch to run the strand. Here's our first LED, a five millimeter RGB LED. And then as we go across, here's our next size up. 
the 20 times scale, so 100 by 100. And then over here, our jumbo LED, a 100 times the original size of 500 millimeters square, running three 10 watt LEDs from the WS2811 control chip. So that was my version of the 100 times larger than life RGB LED and some of the challenges of power management and heat dissipation. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Why don't you join us on the Element 14 community and tell us about your projects, big and small.